Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys the perfect three days itinerary plan for South Goa. Guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Moses J. Sildana. I'm a local from Goa. And in today's video, we're going to talk about many interesting places to check out in South Goa. Being a local, I'm going to be telling you like this authentic Goan cuisine places which you can try. I'm going to show you some incredible places uh, which are not very well known to tourists and which you will have an amazing experience in South Goa. So South Goa compared to North Goa is very authentic. Compared to North Goa, you will find uh, North Goa has a lot of parties, clubbing, you know, it's very commercial, people trying to sell you things. Whereas in South Goa, it is you will get to meet the real Goan people, you will get to experience the real culture, you will expect, uh, you know, the smells, the sights, the nature, everything is very authentic and local. So, you know, if you really want to experience that, I would recommend following this itinerary. Now, this itinerary, I have it on Google Maps. You can completely download the whole thing. Uh, click on go and you will have all of the places on your list for day one, day two and day three. Uh, it's on my membership. I have a membership in my channel, which is the join button. Or you can just click on the comment section or in the description. It costs 58 rupees. It also gives you all the hotel options and it gives you all the information about uh, budget options of how you rent a car bike everything is in the membership option if not you can also watch the full video and of course you can write everything down and make a list for yourself if you want to skip some of the places you can skip and you can make another you know plan just using some of the places from this list guys okay first of all let's talk about hotels where you should be staying now first staying for the first two days you should stay in either in Kolva or in Banaulim. Now these are two great places to stay in South Goa. It's very accessible to all the other areas and they have really good budget friendly hotels as well as they have good five star properties in these areas as well. If you even stay in Varka, Majorda or places like this, it is still easy to access these areas. You can also stay in Uttorda. These are all places in the same line. So South Goa is one long stretch. So all the beaches are basically connected uh, in this line, guys. So that is about hotels. Now, uh, for this tour, you would require a car or bike. So you could rent a car or bike. Now, this is self-drive I'm talking about. You can also hire a, a taxi if you want. And you can follow this itinerary if you're doing that. Uh, bike prices range from around 300 to 500 per day. Of course, you would have to pay for petrol extra. And if you're doing a car, car is starting from around 1,200 for a uh, Swift or a car like that. So yeah, now that you have the information about cars and bikes, let's talk about the itinerary. Now, this itinerary, we are going to start off from this incredible place in South Goa, which is called Velsau. Now, Velsau, there is a place called the, it's like a bird watching point. It's available in my Google Maps. So yeah, the birding, bird watching point. Now, have you watched the movie Deer Zindagi? Or if you've been to North Goa, you've seen the Parra Road, which is like the line which has all these coconut trees. This is an incredible place, but this is even better than the Parra Road is you're going to start okay let me just tell you when you're going to start off the tour so you should have your breakfast around nine o'clock in the morning in uh, in your hotel or you can have your breakfast anywhere around your hotel also and then you want to start off to this place we want to be there around 9 30 because this is when the sun is perfect for pictures so if you are looking for instagram photos or just of course to enjoy the view or the scenery around then you will enjoy this place because it has like this coconut grove and right next to that is a lake okay and it's an incredible lake because it's a full lake full of lotuses it's a very unique place it's full of lotuses and there is birds from all over the world that come and migrate to this uh, lake so you can see some unique species of birds and it's an incredible experience my personal favorite place i always like to go there it's not known to tourists uh, you tend to pass this road if you're coming from the dabolim airport going towards uh, margao or south goa if you're going from the beach side then you would encounter this place but it's an incredible place to check out okay it's called the goa bird watching point okay now the next place we want to go to is we are going to go for brunch brunch is not really we are going to go for brunch it's basically we are going to go to a place 
from here is going to Margao city. Now in Margao city, there is this place called the Goan kitchen. The Goan kitchen. Okay, it's an incredible place uh, serving authentic Goan snacks. It's done by this gentleman uh, from South Goa who's like recreating all these Goan spices. If you want to buy spices, you want to try out uh, different Goan snacks, sweets, uh, masalas. He has everything. This is like one of the most incredible places. Like I've eaten their snacks and I have to be honest, that is one of the best places I've been to in Goa is because the oil that they used and everything is so good it just melts in your mouth and if you really want to taste goa they have veg as well as non-veg so definitely check them out you are going to love this place after this uh, you know you'll spend a little time over there you can spend around half an hour to one hour there of course the first place you want to spend around an hour there click photos do your reels there then of course the goan kitchen after the Goan kitchen, we want to experience the culture of Goa. So we're going to go to a market which is called the MMC market in Margao city. Now this market uh, is frequented by locals and the great part about this market is it's very unique to other markets in India. You'll not find markets like this uh, in other parts of India. Of course, you have regular markets. but Here, you will find very different things. You'll find Goan sausages, you'll find uh, spices and things that you don't find in other places it's because the mixture of these spices and everything has like a lot of portuguese influence because goa used to be a portuguese colony so you'll get a lot of interesting things in this market you'll get you know jewelry snacks everything possible you'll get different types of vinegars the aroma of the place is incredible because it's completely unique so yeah that is the mmc market you want to spend a lot of time there go around you know talk to the locals experience the culture you know when we come to goa most of us just go to all these uh, regular touristy spots and you don't really experience the culture of goa so in this video i'm trying to get you to experience that as well so after experiencing the culture there we can go to another place which is like a very historical landmark for in goa this is called the himalaya ice cream factory this is the oldest ice cream factory from portuguese times that is in uh, south goa uh, you should definitely try it out they have like this gadbad ice cream and everything this is like homemade kind of thing it's like this factory which makes this old ice creams like very nice they have like this sunday which is this ice cream that they have and it's incredible so definitely check that place out after that you know after having ice cream you can probably just roam around the city if you want to see some more places or you can go for lunch now after having some it's a little unique to have ice cream before lunch but you know after it's pretty hot in the uh, daytime so you know you spend most of your day uh, in the city so you know you'll feel hot have an ice cream then next we want to go for lunch now lunch there are a couple of lunch options in the city itself if you're vegetarian there is kamath there is naftara there are a few vegetarian options if you check google maps there's a lot of vegetarian options available in the city for non-veg there is longinos now longinos is a very old restaurant which is in margao city uh, which has like Portuguese kind of food where like the food is like you have different options like kafrial they have uh, pulao which is a very goan goan uh, taste you know and very unique flavors there is galens if you want uh, Asian kind of food so galens is a very popular restaurant for locals and people go there for years like Asian food and if you want Chinese kind of food then you can go there now another place which I would personally recommend if you like seafood for a budget option seafood is absolutely incredible at this place uh, it is a little out of the way but it is a place called Betal Batim because the next step we would be going there anyhow so I would recommend to go here so this lunch place is called Kota Cuisina Kota Cuisina is this restaurant run by my husband and wife and they have like this incredible seafood the price range is around 200 to 300 per dish which is incredible you know the seafood is so fresh and they have one dish which is basically it's not a dish it's a masala which you can put it for any fish uh, it's called the reshad masala it is so incredibly watering mouth watering 
I think they make the best Reshad Masala in whole of Goa. It's my personal favorite place to go to when I want this. I have cravings. I travel 30 kilometers or plus to go there. So Kota Cuisina. If you want to try out um, other cuisines, they have Goan cuisine as well. And they have all kinds of dishes like Goan dishes. And they're very authentic. So I would definitely recommend to go for lunch there. After that, we can go to the Betal Batim beach. Why we want to go to the Betal Batim beach is because it is, you know, afternoon, you want to have a relaxed afternoon, you know, you've already been roaming around. So the Betal Batim beach is a very relaxed place, white sand, uh, you know, the there are a few shacks over there. And the experience is very beautiful there because it's very relaxed. There's no much big crowds and, you know, you want to have a relaxed afternoon, uh, spend some time, probably go swim in the sea. Uh, you'll really enjoy it. So till 4.30, I would recommend to stay in Betal Batim. Uh, enjoy your afternoon there. And, you know, you want to have some sea vibes, right? When you come to Goa, enjoy the beach. So chill out till 4.30. Then I would recommend going back to your hotel and having a shower. Uh, by 5 o'clock, you should be, f maybe 5, 5.15, you should leave again. Have a quick shower. 5.15, you want to go to another place, which is called the Benaulim Beach. Now, Benaulim, you can do either Benaulim or you can do Kolwa. But my personal recommendation would be to do the Benaulim Beach. Now, there are a few options that you can try out in Benaulim Beach. The first option I would definitely recommend uh, is Southern Deck. Now, Southern Deck is a place which has incredible view of the ocean. We are basically going to Benaulim Beach is because we want to watch the sunset. Incredible sunset vibes. They have like, you know, these sundowner parties there. So if you go to North Goa, you would go to Purple Martini and places like that. But Southern Deck is this incredible place in South Goa. It's not very expensive. Uh, and also like it's around two to 400 rupees for dishes. And maybe some of the dishes are more expensive, but you just want to have a few drinks and, you know, just have a few snacks. It's perfect place to go. They have incredible live music. And it's because South Goa is not a party place. Uh, Southern Deck has a lot, lot of party vibes and they have like live music. They have DJs. Uh, so this is one of the only places in South Goa that's very active for parties. So definitely recommend going there. Now, if you don't want to do a party scene, you want to go to another type of different vibe. Uh, then you can go to another shack which is right next door which is called Little Tiger. Little Tiger has also incredible vibes. Uh, it's very cheap. It's compared to other places. It's quite cheap. Uh, Little Tiger, you can get all your seafood. They have snacks, everything. You can watch the sunset having a beer on the beach. Incredible place. Uh, there is also another place on the same road which is leading up to Southern Deck. If you want to try out Italian food now Italian food like you know we have Domino's pizzas and all that those are not real pizzas if you want to ever try a real pizza there's a place called Goodfellas now Goodfellas makes this incredible delicious pizzas they make Italian food which is incredible and the prices are pretty decent around five to six hundred rupees uh, and they have live music as well which is great in the evenings they have like this party vibe and people dance around there and it's just very interesting place. So good fellas. Then there are other shacks which is like Jokons, which is there. Now Jokons also is a very good shack uh, on the uh, Benaulim beach. Uh, that is also have live music. They also have DJs, music and incredible place. Uh, then there is John C's shack. Then there is a couple of other shacks which are available on that beach. But these are the places that I would recommend. If you want to party that night, I would definitely go to Southern Deck. Spend the whole evening there. The night, have a few drinks, dance. You know, it's a great experience. You'll meet people from different cultures. Uh, you'll have a lot of international crowd there. You have Indians, you have Goans. So you'll meet a lot of nice people and you can make a lot of friends there as well. So yeah, guys, that is day one. Now let's move on to day two. Okay, guys, so now to day two. Now for day two, we want to try a lot of different options. But today is going to be a beach day. We are going to do water sports, kayaking and a lot of interesting sunset point view 
places and like it's going to be an interesting thing we're also going to check out a fort on day two so okay we're going to start off the day from a very unique beach here in south goa which is called uttorda beach why we want to start off here of course you're going to start off your day with breakfast and then you're going to leave your hotel around nine o'clock now why we want to go to uttorda is i want to give you guys a glimpse of all the different types of beaches in south goa and each beach has its own character it has its own vibe and you know uh, it's like a different experience at different beaches you'll have an incredible time especially if you're clicking pictures you'll have a great time at every different beach as well as you're going on the way you will see different parts of south goa so you'll get a diff- experience of all the you know local areas and understanding of how the culture is the houses everything so first of all let's go to uttorda beach uttorda beach is one of the most beautiful beaches in south goa this is a white sand beach this is my personal favorite incredible beach there are few shacks available on this beach uh, for pictures these shacks are really good because they have like these colorful you know shacks with like you know these uh, beach uh, beds and they have the it's not the type you see in north goa this is very unique to south goa they have like you know these swings and things which you can click photos very instagramable i would say yeah so south goa uttorda beach incredible place after uttorda beach you know because we are going to do a beach beach day we are going to try out different beaches you would spend a few minutes them like you'd spend maybe half an hour on uttorda beach uh clicking photos like you know walking around the beach uh it's incredible place then the next beach we want to go to we are going to go down further south now now this is going to be a longer day we are going to experience more places so we are going to go further south now the second place which we are going to go to is this beautiful beach again which is called Kavalosim beach now Kavalosim beach is very popular for like international tourists as well as like the upmarket crowd why is because they have all these five star properties in that lane on that beach so if you are looking for a nice exclusive beach the area as well in that area there's a lot of shopping shops like with different kinds of things like they have these kashmiri shops and things like that which is very unique to goa and that place is like you don't have that in many areas of goa so that place is quite unique so kavalosim beach you'll really enjoy the experience there there are a couple of shacks there as well now you can do water sports on either of this beach now you can do it in kavalosim beach or you can do it in uh mobor beach which is right next to do now i personally i would recommend going to kavalosim and seeing the place and then moving on to mobor which is around 2 kilometers ahead which is just very close by uh mobor beach has good water sports why would i ever recommend uh, water sports in south goa is because they give you a long time to do it like you know even your jet ski ride or whatever they actually take you for a long ride for the parasailing it's not like north goa where they take you up for 10 seconds and then they bring you down because they have a thousand people waiting in line south goa they actually give you time even if it might be a little more expensive like around 2000 or whatever for the full package with five water sports so they'll take you bungee uh, there's this uh, bumper boat sorry not bungee b- bumper boat uh, banana boat get ready to get wet guys so they'll you know take you in the water uh, the parasailing they give you a free dip as well so you can do the same thing either in kavalosim beach or mobor beach both are beautiful beaches uh, the water sports is incredible so it will take some of these water sports packages even last for around 1 hour which is great because you get a lot of experience in a lot of different things and you'll really have a good time so these are the two beaches that you will visit uh three beaches that you will visit in the first half of the day now for lunch you can go to kavalosim there is a restaurant called the goan fest now i've done a video on this place already you can watch that video if you want to see like what kind of food they have uh this is not a veg restaurant this is a uh, basically a thali kind of place but if you would really like to try a goan thali then this is a really good place to try out uh, so they have a thali which is called the goan kafrial thali which is like this kafrial chicken 
it's incredible tasting i loved it it was so good they also have fish thali which was really good and they are very budget friendly so if you want to try a local food then i would recommend to go for lunch there but there are also many other restaurants on that line if you want to try out those places as well well and good uh some of them are a little more premium and more expensive then you can have the budget friendly if you want to go to a five star restaurant as well those are uh, options that are available there after this we want to spend the afternoon at a place called kola beach you have your lunch then we go to kola beach now kola beach is something which is very different from any of the other beaches in south goa Kola Beach is basically this place which has this lagoon and in this lagoon this is like this water body which is in between these coconut trees if you've been to South Goa already and you've been there incredible place now when you're going to Kola Beach i would recommend parking your car or bike at the top of the hill do not take it down because that road is very very bad and go down, to go down there is there are these uh, jeeps that are available there and they charge you 100 rupees per person to go down and 100 rupees to come up it's definitely worth it guys because if you are walking down it's very tiring and it can take you quite a long time so pay the 200 for going up and down but you know pay 100 only while going down and you'll get a different jeep while coming up so never pay in advance so okay now kola beach you go to the beach there are this lagoon they charge you around 2 to 300 rupees for kayaking so i would recommend to go kayaking in the afternoon it's beautiful uh you can have there are uh, many restaurants there but my personal favorite over there is the blue lagoon uh, which is right at the entrance of the beach it's a really good view as well and for pictures it's incredible so that is the kola beach now so you're going to spend your uh, time there spend maybe an hour or two there you will have a great time you know go kayaking don't take the half an hour option because half an hour just gets over so fast take the one hour option spend one hour kayaking up and down taking videos reels you'll have a great time uh even elder people can go down but go with the jeep do not go walking you'll be exhausted and yeah you'll have a great time so yeah guys that is for kola beach once you're done with kola beach take the car and go back up you want to leave around 4 o'clock or 4:30 again uh why is because we are going to go to another place which is called cabo de rama now cabo de rama that is this incredible fort which is there in cabo de rama uh in cabo de rama this fort you'll really enjoy the experience because um you have some beautiful views i think one of the best views overlooking the sea from goa is at cabo de rama so once you do the fort uh then you can go to the cabo de rama cliff which is just right next door and at this cliff the sunset pictures that you will get is absolutely stunning it's one of the most beautiful places uh for sunset photos you'll get some great photos you can spend some time over there the moment sunset gets over you're done with your photos i would recommend leaving there because the roads are quite narrow and it's quite dark in the evening there because there's not much lighting so the moment sunset gets done you should probably leave from there and then you can go back to your hotel area which you would go probably you can go to kolva uh, beach which is really nice to spend the evening there or if you want to go back to banaulim beach you can go to back to banaulim beach uh, and then get ready for the next day or you can party if you want to do it again partying there or you can spend the evening at any of the beaches in that area you can also try out majorda beach which is another place that's more quiet if you're looking for a quiet beach if you want to party or you know go to a shack and dance and drink and stuff you can go to kola or sorry no kolva or uh, benaulim beach so yeah guys that is done for day 2 now let's move on to day 3 where we are going to move to another place guys Okay guys so now for day 3 we are going to talk about Palolem and Agonda now you could either stay in one of these options one is Palolem or Agonda i personally would recommend to stay in Palolem because you can straight away do a lot of activities there's more food options and there is more places that you can check out from there as well as you can get rent a car or rent a bikes available there but my personal recommendation would be to use the same rent a car or bike which you had uh, rented for the first 2 days if not you can also use a taxi to reach there and rent a car or bike from there itself 
Now, once you reach there, you should leave the your hotel in Kolva or Benaulem at around 8 o'clock in the morning because it will take you around one, one hour to ride to Palolem. Once you reach Palolem at around 9 o'clock, I would recommend you to go to your hotel and leave your bags there. You, any of the hotels always leave your bag. I, you know, they have that option where you can leave your bags at the reception and check in at around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, which is the check-in time in Goa. So what we are going to do is we want to waste the time in the morning. So we want to try out a few places that we can check out over there. So what we are going to do is first place we want to go to is Butterfly Beach. Now how to go to Butterfly Beach is by taking a boat available on the Palolem Beach. Now there are many boats available all along the beach there will be people coming up to you and asking you if you want to go to Butterfly Beach. They charge you around 500 to 600 rupees per person. Uh, for the boat or if you want to rent the whole boat it would be 3000 or to 3500 uh, which takes you to the beach now what they do in this trip it's a boat trip basically and it's around half an hour to 45 minutes for this whole trip including they give you 15 minutes to you know chill at the butterfly beach 15 to 20 minutes at butterfly beach so once you take the boat they'll first thing that they'll do is they'll take you to see dolphins so that you'll get to see a lot of dolphins all around the boat. It's nice when they jump around and it's incredible. Experience the water in Palolem is very blue, very beautiful. So yeah, once you go to the Butterfly Beach, the before re reaching Butterfly Beach, they will take you to another beach which is called Honeymoon Beach. Now you could either get down at Honeymoon Beach or you can get down at uh, Butterfly Beach, one of the two options. I personally recommend going to Butterfly Beach, uh, Honeymoon Beach is not that beautiful. On the way they will show you turtle rock, there is some chicken rock and things that look like turtles and chickens. So yeah. Then after that you go to Butterfly Beach and in Butterfly Beach you will get this incredible view, it's this blue lagoon, it's very beautiful. Uh, you can take beautiful pictures there and you can have a great time. Uh, click a lot of photos, climb up these rocks and spend some time. Please don't take any drinks or anything there because you, know, you should not leave any trash there, keep Goa clean. Yeah, so go to Butterfly Beach, you'll have a great time. After you come back, you can take your bike or car. Okay, this trip I told you is around 45 minutes to one hour. Sometimes it's shorter depending if people want to leave early or if people want to stay longer. It depends on the boat people. So mostly it's around 45 minutes. But yeah, so once you go back, you're going to go take your car or bike and we are going to go to another beach which is an incredible beach and one of the most beautiful beaches in South Goa this is a turtle nesting beach okay this is called Galgi Bag beach in South Goa it's around uh, 15 to 20 minutes away from uh, Palolem beach uh, you go to Galgi Bag and there is also an incredible bridge right next to that which you can click incredible photos because there's this a uh, little water inlet which is there and you can click amazing photos i'll put the links all in the google maps as well as i'll put a photo here so you can see what the bridge looks like so yeah click a few pictures there incredible place after going to galgi baga spending some time there you can go back uh, to palolem then i would recommend you know you check into your hotel by the time you know it's already afternoon check into your hotel uh, there are lots of food options. I would not give you a specific food option on this place. But if you want to go to have some, you know, any food, you can also go to the mill. There is an option called the mill, uh, which is a nice vegetarian option. But it's like this organic food and stuff. It's like a cafe, very nice cafe. Or you can uh, try out local thalis. There's many restaurants there. Okay, after that, what we are going to do is we are going to check out uh after checking into a hotel have your lunch you know spend some time at the beach uh just relax you know don't do too much uh palolem is incredible just walk around the beach or just chill at your uh beachfront hotel which are the beach huts that are available there uh and then in the evening you can go to this place called uh agonda beach now in agonda beach if you don't want to do agonda you can skip agonda as well uh, and go do kayaking on your beach itself which is the Palolem beach or you can do kayaking in Agonda beach also I would recommend going to Agonda because you'll at least get to see another place as well 
so yeah go to agonda spend some time there for sunset i would recommend coming back to uh, palolem now in palolem there are different places which have really good sunset sun sundowner parties it's not really a party but it's just like this sun, nice music and uh, good vibes like this kala baya there's a place called kala baya there is kasa jali jali now jali jali that is not really a sunset view it's opposite side so you can't see the sunset but it's a nice place as well uh then you can also go to the art resort art resort i would recommend for evening sunset as well as spending the evening there because they have live music you can dance you can drink the art resort is beautiful one of the most beautiful places in goa so yeah guys so that is how you can spend the evening there and yeah so that is south goa for you guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any further questions comment down below and i'll be more than happy to help you guys and yeah guys so that is my tour plan if you join the membership uh you'll get all access to all the maps as well as everything if not you can also just uh, write it down as i mentioned so yeah guys thank you for watching please do like and subscribe and i'll be bringing you guys lots of other videos from here in goa